Today, the concrete and glass sprawl of Dallas, Texas, bears the weight of a storied past. This modern-day metropolis, born of a humble trading post on the Trinity River, carries a narrative that has been etched by the churn of time. Yet my own journey through the Lone Star State isn't rooted in Dallas's typical callings of rodeos and sprawling ranches, the rich tapestry of Tex-Mex food, or even the iconic Dallas Cowboys. No, this sojourn has a different compass, charting a course that is twofold. The love for diecast cars and my camaraderie with my friend JC, a resident of Oklahoma and the owner of JC Auto Parts, nestled in the quaint confines of nearby Marietta. Joining us on this excursion is my brother Justin, flying down from Knoxville, adding his voice to our traveling chorus. We took rest in the echoing quiet of a farmhouse, one with a few more years under its belt than Oklahoma has been a state. We rose with the sun, setting out for Dallas with the lure of diecast treasures tugging at our spirits. Our first destination, Dallas Vintage Toys, a wonderland of memorabilia and collectibles whispering tales from across the decades. While their collection of collectibles was vast, the diecast section, while not huge, offered a quality array of cars from the last 25 to 30 years at reasonable prices, but those weren't what grabbed my eye. On the counter, I found two early 80s Hot Wheels cases filled with a trove of banged up old cars just asking for a customization. At 25 bucks per case, it was also every customizer's dream. Each case was over full, so that meant the cars were less than a dollar a piece, and the old worn cases were just the nostalgic cherry on top but I'll show you those later. Down the road, we found Jaden's toys tucked away in the bustling Stonebriar Center Mall. Though the diecast collection was smaller and perhaps a touch overpriced, the friendly staff made for an enjoyable experience. Plus, tucked away in the back, they had a charming mini museum showing Jaden's personal collection of 70s, 80s, and 90s toys. It's like a small donation-based trip down memory lane. In a twist of serendipity, we spotted a sign for the National Video Game Museum in nearby Frisco, Texas. Upon arriving, we discovered that adjacent to it was Traintopia, an intricate world of G-scale model railroads, complete with an array of 124th scale die-cast and plastic model cars. For $10, you could lose yourself in this tiny, vibrant universe that bloomed from day to night in an instant. There were even scavenger hunts for kids and adults alike. Once that was accomplished, it was off to the video game museum, where for just $12, we were launched into the annals of gaming history with interactive displays vintage consoles and arcade cabinets, including a surprising amount of vintage systems that we could actually get our hands on and reignite that tactile interactivity that our muscle memory had long forgotten. As twilight descended and the arcade came to a close, we couldn't resist one final stop. Walmart, of course, this time in Gainesville, Texas, which was slightly unnerving considering they have the same Hello Gainesville sign in the Florida Walmarts. On Sunday, we broadcasted a live episode of Diecast Breakdown, right from the showroom of JC's Auto Parts. JC's offers a boutique assortment of Hot Wheels, carded and ready for the next collector. Some of these cars are almost 20 years old, as JC likes to buy from collectors and resell them. You never know what you'll find on the pegs at JC's. After wrapping recording, we took a whirlwind tour of the lush Oklahoma countryside. And to my surprise, hills, almost mountains and in those mountains, a stunning view of Turner Falls. As I disembarked my plane in Gainesville, Florida this time, the weight of my bag filled with my new Tycast acquisitions was a stark reminder of the beauty of this hobby. A hobby that connects us across vast cities like Dallas and quaint hideaways like Marietta. So if your passion calls out to you during your travels, answer it. Strike up a conversation with a stranger, share in the joy of this vast and diverse interest. And remember, pack light, because those little diecast cars add up quickly. Now, let's get to the fun part and see what I found. All right, here we go. We got a lot of really great cars to look at. I got a few right out of the gate. My brother had brought a few that he had found, including this lovely little car. This is the Nissan 180SX. Uh, very cool casting, and I love that it has clear windows, as does this Mazda Cosmopolitan. Actually, I should say it's the Mazda Cosmo Sport. Uh, no super treasure hunt for me, but that's okay, because I like to drill them apart anyway. JC had a few cars from his collection in store that he wanted to 
show with me, and this is that uh, Hot Wheels police car, which is an interesting kind of non-licensed car <laughs> that uh, is kind of uh, Japanese sedan-based and right-hand drive. Uh, I always thought it was a very interesting casting. I'm sure there's a curious story behind the design of that one. Um, Dallas Vintage Toys. This was something I found that uh, goes against my rule of 164 scale only, although it is pretty close to 164 scale. Um, and uh, just a die-cast tram from uh, Walt Disney World. So somebody went to Disney World and took this back to Dallas and lost some of the cars. I have some of the cars, so I'm going to reunite them and make my train just a little bit longer. This car I found at uh, Walmart while we were there in Gainesville, Texas, which was weird. The 32 Ford Tudor sedan from M2. You'll notice a lot of these cars are open, <laughs> uh, and that is because I was so tightly packed I could not uh, take the packaging with them with me on the plane. So, uh, but this is a newer casting from M2, and I think it's a really good one. And uh, really like the exposed engine. Very nice design. Great wheels. Love the wheels old school pizza cutter hot rod wheels and tires another cool find this is the type one thing from american pickers that has made its way into green light i love all of the vw things they've been doing lately they got one from pawn stars as well um but this one is very very barn findy in its appearance with some faux rust and frosted glass and uh, i think the yep look at that trunk opens and uh, get your little flat four in there I found a few of these that I'm very excited about this is the uh, Chrysler Conquest from Auto World true 164th scale it is not lensed headlamps as David Johns likes to see but it is still incredibly well detailed very well done painted taillights on here lots of really great tampos for the actual display name badges and stuff so this is Chrysler on the back and you got the nice little badging up here very nice casting very crisp lines on this feels almost like a Tamika the way they got the the line so crisp on this one got a mystery bag <laughs> I don't normally do the mystery bags but uh wanted to see what the VW from this series looked like, and there it is. It's got a nice matte finish, it's got some faux wood on it, and I really like this casting a lot. Uh, so we were looking for the Brazilian Charger for uh, JC because he doesn't have one, but uh, I found that one and got it, and I got the little sticker that goes with it, which I thought was very cool. Mitsubishi 3000 GT, more of that amazing Mitsubishi Chrysler crossover stuff because they had the Dodge Stealth first over at Auto World and now they've got the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. I don't believe the hood opens, although it is a separate piece. It does not open. But one thing I really, really like about Auto World castings is how detailed the chassis is. Like That is absolutely some of the best chassis detailing that you'll find anywhere, certainly for the price point, which is just over five bucks US here. So, another great car to add to the collection of my Malay's semi-muscle cars. Uh, this is another car that uh, I found at Dallas Vintage Toys. Uh, they had a lot of cars from about 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, and I am a sucker for Colonnade Top uh, Montes and uh, GM cars, and <laughs> I know this one is ridiculous, but I also have a soft spot for tuned cars. And uh, while this is more funky than I usually prefer, um, the combination of the Zamac type finish and the just wackiness of it spoke to me. And it was, a, I believe, $1.99 at Dallas Vintage Choice, which I thought was very fair for a collectible shop that usually uh, those prices are a lot higher. This was another Walmart find. This is just a, I forget what this one's called, HW4 Track. Uh, just kind of a cool indie F1 style uh, car and uh, new casting for 2023. So, picked one up. Saving the really good stuff earlier. There's that other conquest that I found. 
This is a really cool one. This is from Greenlight. This is the Brady Bunch station wagon. This variant is from them going on a family vacation, and they've got four uh, bags of luggage of some kind in the back on the roof. There's nothing in the trunk though, but still a very cool display. It's got kind of a frosted look to it, to the glass, as this is supposed to be the dusty and dirty uh, version of the car. And there's a little bit of a, an error on the white wall there, but again, I don't mind too much because I'm probably going to customize this car anyway. This was another car from Dallas into Choice that this was one of the ones that I waited to crack just because I thought it was interesting. Unfortunately, it's gotten flipped around since then. Um, but I uh, wanted to make sure I got a good image of this. This is Team Bartwell. I don't know too much about this, but it was the Hot Wheels Whips series. And looks like this was... When was this dated? 2003. So... 20 years ago. <laughs> and now it is finally coming free. Well, it is very well sealed. Alright. But speaking of Malay's era GM cars. Oh, well, this is not the fantastic new Johnny Lightning. Monty, this is still a very good casting, and this is, uh, I believe this is based on the Montezuma. Um, it's got Team Burtwell on the back there. And uh, it's interesting because it is a metal body plastic base, but it does have uh, fancy real riders on it and some extra tampo work as this is usually not painted in. Uh, but just a very cool uh, execution on this casting that I wanted to make sure I added to the Flying Valiant fleet for potential builds. Um, before I get to the rest of the finds at Vintage Toy Dallas, or Dallas Vintage Toys, I got a few more. Uh, this was another one that was on the shelf at JC's that I was able to pick up. 63 Thunderbird, one of the last true metal metal cars that they had in rotation. I know there's one or two that are still out there, but you know this is one of those last ones that really had that good weight to it, and it was a very nice casting. I uh, wish it was still in circulation. Maybe it'll come back. So, over at Jaden's, uh, did not find too much that I was interested in at uh, Jaden's. Not their fault. Just the stuff they had that was cool. I already had. Uh, they did have these cars in uh, one of the action figure bins, though. Uh, this was in the Marvel bin, obviously. So we got some really nice vans. We got the 77 custom van. And we've got, I can't remember what this one's called. It does not say on the bottom. But just a very cool kind of fantasy van. Um, but really like this setup. And uh, didn't have this one in the premium version. So it's nice to have that. So we get the metal metal and the real riders with these really cool uh, green line tires and slotted mags. So found these finally in stock at Walmart. Love this casting. Very nice casting uh, for a mainline matchbox. I believe it's a little smaller than 164 scale, but still a very cool execution on the flashiest of the El Caminos, the cat eye tail lights. This is from the Fast and Furious series. This is that Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, I got it not because I like the one in Fast and Furious, because it's only in there for all of two seconds, but it's a very nice casting, and I really like it in this tan. So, absolutely, a car I am very much looking forward to customizing in the near future. Let's see, I think we got a few more JC finds. These are the GTO. We got this uh, Swoop Coupe. That reminds me very much of like a Lincoln Zephyr. Uh, kind of a fantasy, kind of hot rod Lincoln looking thing. Uh, tuned Z28 Camaro. This is from one of the very early tuned ones. Uh, a little less stylized than I think the current ones, but still a very cool casting. 
And I am going to build that tuned layout someday. Also, the uh, this is a 69 Judge GTO. And this was a fantasy car called the Furiosity. <laughs> Wonder why. Uh, and that is a super based kind of fantasy car. Alrighty. Olds 442. Very great casting that uh, it last I saw it was on uh, mud tires for one of the off-road series, but this is the one that is you know, still on the regular chassis. Very cool, very good looking casting of a very cool car. Alright. I think this is the last of the Walmart finds in here. I just think this one's silly. <laughs> it rocks as it rolls. And I believe that's why it's called the Rockin' Railer. Um, just, I don't know. It's a new casting. It's got a fun gimmick, and these look like they make great parts, so picked it up. All right. And this is the last in here of the JC Finds. This is the, uh, I believe it's the Peugeot uh, 405. Uh, another kind of oddball casting from uh, Hot Wheels. Feels very much like one of the Corgi Jr. cars. That may be where it's from, I'm not sure, but it does have lens headlamps. David Johns, check that out. I feel like I call out <laughs> David Johns too much on this thing. But you gotta love lens headlamps. All right, so we're getting into the finds from those two cases at uh, Dallas Vintage Toys. Uh, these were the ones that did not get in the protective case for the trip home. I actually ended up leaving the cases, uh, one with JC in Oklahoma, and Justin took one home because he had room for one. Uh, and I'll pick that one up from him later, and JC's going to display his at the shop. But, uh, just a really fun find, just to happen to cross them, and yeah, your, your eyes are not deceiving you. That's a red line. That is the Redline version of the Torino Stalker. It's definitely seen better days in that somebody shoved a screwdriver through there and popped the, the hood scoop up, which can't blame them. That's exactly what I probably would have done as a kid because I would have wanted to see what that goes. So that was when I was like, oh, this is a very interesting container. Uh, I, I just kind of glanced in and, and saw them and I was like, oh my gosh, I see black walls. I see weird stuff. I definitely have to pick this up. Weird stuff like this uh, Kidco Tough Wheels Firebird that's definitely seen better days. It is smashed up, but it does have opening doors and definitely a good candidate for another junkyard wall build. Uh, this one, not sure what this one was, but it was battery powered at some point. It had lights that came on. Uh, it's almost like a slot car body, but it is die cast metal on top. And, uh, so if you got any ideas what this is, it's made in Macau, copyright 1983, U.S. foreign patent pending, and that's all it says on it. But I guess it used to light light up, and there's probably some kind of launch mechanism in there. Uh, so this is the T Totaler. It's definitely seen better days. It's missing some stuff up front. Uh, but again, lots of cool customization opportunities there. A lot of interesting black walls. This one, unfortunately, somebody <laughs> did their own custom on it and chopped the top, along with this uh, white wall version of the black wall era Mustang that just like most of them is missing its windshield. I do have a few with windshields in place though, but those are handy for, again, junkyard wall builds. These were the two newest cars in the pack. Uh, a couple of, uh, what are these? Can't remember the name of them. But they are metal metal cars, and uh, just a cool hot rod design. This one still has the windshield in place. This one does not. So great donor engine for some kind of wild custom. Another Blackwell Era 57 Chevy, this time intact. So this is uh, one of those fun fantasy ones. This is the Spacer Racer. Uh, it's mostly intact. It's missing a little bit on the back there. And this is the uh, Hot Wheels non-licensed Speed Racer, Second Wind. One of the very early versions of it. 
Um, another cool black wall era card, the Corvette Stingray. Love that red, orange, yellow, and white livery on it. Got a few of those. Um, very, very smashed up police car. <laughs> Somebody had fun with this one. Um, I actually just used one of these in a uh, in my junkyard wall. But this one looks like somebody just drug it along the ground. I've never seen wear away like that. That thing has been ground up. So, you know, cars like that told the person that was selling them that these weren't worth anything. And for most collectors, they wouldn't be like this uh, Monty Soccer. I'm very excited about this. This is one of my favorite castings ever because again it's colonnade style GM but uh, also got that black wall chunkiness to the design that I love and uh, and it's one of the stalker series which I very much enjoyed this one the Torino stalker the uh, Fairmont stalker uh, all very fun castings so very nice to have one of these in my collection and it is well heavily kid customized intact so I might take that color scheme and do a uh, redo on it because uh, I like taking kid customs and uh, like uh, Paul Udalis does uh, I believe he's done a few kid custom tributes where he found the kid custom and then built it in a nicer way and check that out another red line so this is the custom van or the super van depending on what area you're looking at uh, but it is the metal metal version with red lines of the paramedic and I do believe all of these red lines are genuine I, They do not look like repops and the reason why they I don't think they're repops is they are not the ones that I think have ever gotten repops like the money and the super van All right, we're not done yet My amazing friend Amy made this wrap for me. She does a lot of seamstress work and this was a gift for making a custom for her uh, and it is fantastic for traveling with. Very clever design. So, uh, all right, here we go. Right out of the gate, we got a red line twin mill with a kind of tiki setup. Yeah, it's missing an engine, but uh, very cool uh, tampos on that one. I might find a way to recreate those because I really like that design uh, but you know again not something that a collector would want but a customizer or a restorer very cool Ferrari 308 in the black wall era I believe this would be um, wasn't ultra hots but I can't remember what the gold wheel ones were uh, was something like ultra hots this is that 40 Ford two-door very late 80s early 90s style graphics on it a little bent up but very cool casting very great one for doing customs this is the mongoose minus the windshield but the rest of the car is all there it's that very cool corvette based uh, late 70s dragster a lot of great opportunity there check it out another red line this is that GTO Fire Chief. Uh, it's one that I've been itching to get in my collection, and wherever I've seen it, even in condition like this, they want, you know, five, ten bucks for it. And uh, this one was less than a dollar. And not to be outdone, I got the police version as well in red line form. So uh, I'm thinking that might be, if I do a red line days build again, I might have to do a, a his and hers. Redline customization. This is the Royal Flush, Royal Flash, I should say. Uh, basically a Lotus Esprit, but not very much more wedge shaped. But I really like this tampo. Very wacky 70s color design, orange, purple, and yellow on one car. That's a lot. But we got a couple of Duesenbergs. Fortunately, they are missing their tops and one's missing their windshield, but uh, great casting, great grill, a lot of fun opportunities with those grills, and they got a little trunk in the back, uh, fun fenders. These ones will have a very cool potential project ahead for them. Right. 
This is the uh, 80s Corvette. I think it's it was just called, yeah, 80s Corvette. Um, lifting top, metal, metal car, and one of the few that had paint on the inside for a mainline. So you got a two color interior with a red duffel bag and red seats. Another black wall car that I really like, the Upfront 924. Unfortunately, this one's been banged up. It's got a little uh, dents in the A-pillars, but still a very fun casting. I enjoy it a lot, and uh, I'll look forward to doing something fun with that one. All right. Next car. This one just barely fit because it's a bit of a tall boy. I believe this was called the Bywayman at one point, um, but uh, fun kind of 70s square body truck, but not quite um, just a great casting. This one and the Baja Breaker were some of my favorite cars of that era. You got a Z-Wiz here. Again, loving that multicolor, ultra rad paint job. And another Torino Stalker. This one also somebody decided to stick a, a screwdriver under the uh, hood scoop. This one is a black wall though, not a red line. Still very cool. The Murata Stalker. This is another one that I really, really like. Uh, so there's one of these in the junkyard wall as well. So it'll be nice to take this one and do something with it that maybe doesn't involve the junkyard wall. So you can see it a little better. This is the uh, GMC RV, or GMC Motorhome, I should say, in the Palm Beach green livery. Great casting. It's definitely not anywhere close to 164th scale, but still very cool. Like it a lot. Good potential for a Stripes build. I know they made a Stripes version for Hot Wheels, but it is really pricey to find now. Blackwall US Mail Truck. This is the, I think it was called the Combat medic or something like this at some point uh, opening doors both doors are still there you can still see the u.s mail logo on the side my dad was a letter carrier for 37 years as many of you know because i bring it up all the time so uh, it's always fun to get a mail truck to add to the collection I might have to do a, a regular old resto on that another red line um, this is that uh fire engine looks like it took some literal fire uh, melted the grill but you know again a lot of opportunities for customization here uh, and I guess it's a real red line for what that's worth will it have red line tires when I'm done with it probably not but again, that's part of the fun a spoiler sport that is in very very nice condition I uh, was surprised at how nice this was considering the other cars in the container. It's still got a little chipping up here, but Tampo is almost 100% intact, and it's one of my favorite Tampos ever. Just really love that sunset design. The uh, Stutz Bearcat or Bearhawk? I think this is the Bearcat. Uh, and it's got an interesting error to it. It was uh, printed improperly. So <laughs> it's got the the tempo kind of leading off to the side. I don't really collect error cars, and this one's definitely pretty banged up for a collector to want, but uh, still a very cool casting with the metal body metal base. Auburn Speedster, great casting, and uh, pretty unusual to find one with the windshield and both headlights intact. That is frequently snapped off, as are the fenders. Another Royal Flash. This one's actually got the Lotus logo on it, even though it is not officially labeled as a Lotus, but uh, great casting. Another one of the super vans. This one is a Blackwall era. Uh, really, really banged up. Wheels are locked on it. Kind of rusty. It's definitely left outside a few times, but uh, I'm sure it had a lot of a lot of love and a lot of great history behind it. One of my true all-time favorites, the 82 Cadillac Seville. 
And this one, again, in beautiful shape. The glass is all there. Uh, and uh, another car that was just in my uh, junkyard wall. And uh, people got, uh, I got a few comments about chopping up uh, cars, this one specifically, for that build. But uh, I got another one. It was less than a buck. So, kind of funny how that shakes out. This is another oddballer. It says, street is neat on it. It is the Landlord, Blackwall era car, kind of a fantasy thing, but really cool engine and uh, canopy on it. This is the Hot Bird, Trans Am, uh, 77, 78 Trans Am. Great casting, pretty banged up though. This one's in really nice shape. Sadly, it's missing one of its real riders. And it is a little bent in the back, but the tampos are all still pretty intact on it. Just really like the tampos on this one. We got another red line here. This is the Rock Buster. And while it is bent, it is still intact. The roll cage is still there. I think I can still salvage it. Um, but yeah, this one's 100% complete. Uh, just got some bent rims to it. Definitely got a lot of love during its previous ownership. Another version of that Corvette Stingray. Again, a very fun uh, vintage design. Another Auburn. This one demonstrating the uh, missing windshield, although I don't think it's missing so much as it was just jammed down. Nah, it's snapped off. Yeah, it's gone. This is another one that frequently gets a lot of damage, and is, this one is no exception. The handlebars have fallen off on it. It's a old 50s style Ford truck. Another casting that I just really like, and it comes with motorcycles on it, which I think is cool. Another Auburn Speedster, and this one is also intact. Very nice. And we're going to wrap things up here with this uh, Hot Wheels van. That name escapes me at the moment, but uh, kind of a cool fantasy van. A shame the tampos aren't in better shape because they do look pretty wild. But anyway, those are my finds from my trip to Dallas and Oklahoma. Again, big thanks to JC and JC's Auto Parts for hosting us and big props to Dallas Vintage Toys and Jaden's Toy Shop. Uh, very fun to visit them if you're in the Dallas area I highly recommend you seek them out but uh, yeah it's all about being in the right place at the right time and being open to what's available to you So, and thank you so much for making it to the end of another video again I want to thank my patrons and members you can find out more about joining them by visiting diecastmedianetwork.com or clicking the join button below and while you're down there Make sure to hit all of the little buttons that make me happy and make YouTube happy. <laughs> so, as always, I want to thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Mm -hmm.